Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this JMini tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn how we can configure the HTML reports and we will also understand the different sections in the HTML report. So let's begin. In our previous session, we learned that how we can generate the HTML report. So there were three ways, two were from the command line and one is from the UI. So in some cases, you might need to customize that report. Okay, so in order to customize the report, first let's generate the report and then we will see how we can customize and see the how it looks like when we customize it so for that just let's go to the tools here go to the generate html report and select the csv file which we created in our previous session so it will be on my desktop so i'm selecting results2.csv open this file now select the user.properties file this file will be in the bin folder of your gmeter so go to the bin folder here and you will find this user.properties file click on this one here and now you need to select the output folder of your html okay so browse that one so in previous session we created a folder on the desktop for that one so i'm going to my desktop here and i'm selecting this html report folder click open now generate the report so it will generate the report and we will confirm that after generating and once it will be generated so file has been generated now go to the desktop and open the folder here and open this index.html now you can see that the html has been generated and this is generated from the results2.csv okay so there are multiple things you can do here the first thing is that you might need to change the title of this report by default in jmeter is apache jmeter dashboard but you might need based on your project okay so let's first change this one or customize this one and see how it looks like so for that you need to the bin folder of the jmeter and here you need to open user.properties file okay and here in this particular file you will find a report configurations you need to scroll down a bit here and you will find that one so reporting configuration and this is the first configuration you can change from here this is the report title by defaults apache jmeter dashboard you can change it so for that you need to uncomment this one and you need to change as per your requirement so i am changing it to my my api performance testing project okay and i am saving this file now we need to restart the jmeter if we are generating the reports from the ui okay so i am closing this one and let me reopen the jmeter here and we will generate the report again so meanwhile it will start so what i will do is that i will go to my this html report folder here and remove these files from here okay now the folder has been removed and let me go to the jmeter here and in the jmeter i need to go to the tools here again click on generate report here and i need to provide the same results 2.csv file which we provided earlier so go to my desktop and here is the file open this file we need to select the user.properties file and we know that it's in the bin folder of the jmeter go to the bin folder here select the user.properties file and we need to select the output folder so i'm going to my desktop again and i need to select this html report folder now click generate so the report has been generated now let's go to the folder again so you can see that now we have this index.html file again here open this file and now you can see that it's changed to my api performance testing project and previously it was apache jmeter dashboard so that's how you can change the basic title of your report okay the next thing we need to understand is about the application performance index so here you can see that we have a toleration threshold and the frustration threshold 
so basically these values reflects to your minimum and maximum threshold okay so right now by default it is 500 millisecond which is a minimum value and the maximum is one second and 500 milliseconds so if your samples lie between these so it will satisfy your performance okay if not okay so it will index between zero and one so if you are getting one this means that most of your request or 100% of your request in this particular case lie between these two values okay and if it doesn't lie between these in terms of the response so it will show the zero or it will calculate based on the number of samples lie between these or doesn't lie between these values so let's suppose let's talk about this sample post rest api okay sample post rest api so now you can see that the average minimum is satisfying the minimum threshold right and if i go here for this particular this one rest api get one okay so you can see the times are quite higher they are not lying between these okay so these are not satisfying this one okay so this means that the performance is not what you are expecting and you can define these two threshold values in the gmeter as well as per your requirement so now how you can define those values okay so again you need to go to the properties file and in the properties file you will find the threshold as well okay so here here is the first one and here is the second one okay so you can change this parameter you need to uncomment this one so i am changing it to 5000 and changing this to 15000 so 5 seconds and 15 seconds so i'm saving this one and let me restart the gmeter so that we can generate the latest report and i'm creating this folder as well from here let me clear this one and now let's go to let me open the gmeter again and we will generate another report and see what is the difference here okay so let it open and we will generate another report here okay Jmeter is up and running now, so I'm going to the tools here, go to the generate HTML report and go to the browse here and here we need to select the same CSV file. So I'm going to my desktop and this is the results 2.csv. Then I need to select the user.properties file. Let me go to my Jmeter bin folder here and let me select this file here and now the output folder so it would be my same folder on the desktop and i'm selecting this html folder now generate this report so once it will be generated we will open and see what is the difference okay so the report has been generated let me go to the folder here and here you can see that we have this report generated i'm opening this index.html and now you can see my threshold is basically five seconds the minimum is five seconds and maximum is 15 seconds okay so you you can define these thresholds as per your requirement so overall the your application performance index is 0 0.5 which is average so it should be somewhere near to one okay so it will be more appropriate and more accurate in terms of your performance okay furthermore we have this stats section so it will show the stats the number of errors okay the average time the minimum time maximum time median of your samples so median is of 10 samples here similarly this shows the 90 percent means out of 10 nine requests got executed within this time similarly for 95 and 99 percent and here's a throughput for this transaction and the bytes we send and receive furthermore if there are any errors it will display errors here okay and you get to know what kind of errors you are getting so right now this error is not a proper error our assertion was failed and we failed it intentionally so that we can see some errors here in the report 
okay so this is the overview and this is the overall summary how many percentage is passed and how many percentage is failed okay then we have some charts here over time throughput response time okay if i click on anyone right now you don't see anything because the granularity is one minute okay and we are executing results or the executions are getting very rapidly so that's why we are not seeing this on such kind of a graph but when you are executing uh, scripts which might take one hour two hour so you will see the difference here right now in order to see the difference we will change this granularity to minimum value okay again for that what we need to do is that we need to go to the properties file and here you will find this one yeah so right now it is set to 60,000 which means it's a one minute so I'm changing it to 60 right now so that so that we can see the difference and again I need to close the JMeter to take the effect and I will start the JMeter and I will also clear this folder from here okay so that we can generate the new report okay so once the JMeter will be up and running we will generate another report and see how it looks like now okay so it will be more readable report as compared to the previous one so JMeter is up and running and I'm going to the tools again going to generate HTML report now click on browse and again I would be selecting the same report which is my results 2.csv and now I need to select the user.property file let me go to the JMeter and the JMeter it would be in the bin folder now I need to select the output folder so it would be on my desktop and on desktop this is the my folder okay now generate the report and once it would be generated we will open and see the difference okay so the report has been generated now let's go to the desktop here and you can see that the report has been generated open this one and now go to the charts here go to the overtime okay so now you can see you are seeing some kind of a data here so from this presentation you can analyze what is happening how your different transaction and the requests are performing so this is the response time over time so on the left side there's these are the average response time in milliseconds and this is the granularity so this is this will help you to understand what is happening with your request so this particular request basically sample get request is having a variable time which is increasing so this is something which is should be notified and get reported to the developer so this actually reflects that the performance gradually decreasing or increasing depending on the number of the load okay so similarly goes for the different reports here okay you can see some kind of proper data here and if i open the previous one you might not see a proper data here so again you can see that this one and if i open this one so you can see a very straight line so you will not be identifying what is happening okay but here if i go to this one you can see each and every report it has some proper data so what were the active number of threads at the start and how they gradually decreased so these stats will really help you to identify the bottlenecks okay so these bottlenecks will help you to to identify the problems and then you need to fix those performance issues okay now you can also define some custom graphs right now there is no there is no custom graph because we haven't defined that but you can define the custom graphs as well so let me open the jmeter official uh, website for html report generation and let me open this file so there are, the, there are a lot of properties you can change okay so here if you go here down let me go down here and i will show you what properties you can change right now so if you want to make a massive change so jmeter suggests that you should copy okay you should copy them in your user.properties file 
instead of these reported generator dot properties now again where this file exists so go to the bin folder and it would be here so report generator dot properties file so if you want to change some more properties so from here you can change so you have a lot of things here again you need to uncomment and you can change the properties as per your need but what they are suggesting is that you should not change anything in the report generator dot properties file instead what you need to do you need to copy from here okay and you need to paste it in user dot properties file and call from there okay this is what jmeter is suggesting okay so then if you want to filter some data for example you want to filter some request so this is how you can use this one so you will also find this in the user dot properties file okay then we have this configuration you can go through this one okay and there are some general settings you can do for gmeter dot report dot generator so you can do different settings from here as per your requirement okay so that's how you can actually define and configure the report so that it makes more sense and it looks appropriate which can be presentable and which can help you to identify the problems thank you so much for watching this tutorial we hope that you have learned something today if you like our content then do subscribe our channel like share and comment and once again thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next lecture